welcome all of you once again. It's Backpack on Still We're Moving Around Egypt. Sometimes we move outside Cairo to bring you more about the important sites located on the Red Sea. Some other times we travel to the historical sites to Upper Egypt, and sometimes we find out together more about Cairo. In Cairo, you have many different places to visit, whether we are talking about modern Egypt or ancient Egypt or historical sites. Sometimes you have some places to visit, like, for example, the palaces that each palace can tell you more about the era it belongs to. In addition, of course, to the religious sites, like, for example, mosques, churches, and many other important places. Let's find out more about Cairo and more about the beautiful sites located in Cairo. contains a large number of palaces dating from the time of the pharaohs through the Romans, Fatimid, Mamluks, and the modern Egyptian kingdom. Today, our visit will be to the Amir Taj Palace, also known as Dar Taj, meaning the home of Taj. It is one of the most well-known Mamluk palaces remaining in historic Cairo. But who is Taj? Taj al Mansuri was at first a Mamluk of the Muhammad Qalawun army. However, he then rose through the ranks and became the chief of council or Amir Majlis. Amir Taj helped Salah al-Din Saleh Muhammad Qalawun to rise from the ranks and become Sultan in 752. In 755, Amir Taj, then Grand Dundar, was imprisoned only to be released 
and afterwards made governor of Aleppo. He was sentenced to prison a second time in 759 and yet again released in 762 due to the good relations he held with the Albuga el Khataki. very beautiful palace. It is one of the most important places to visit. It was built by Amir Taj in 1352 to celebrate his marriage to the Sultan and Nasser Muhammad daughter Khwant Zahra. However, not even his wealth and high rank could save him from falling victim to malicious conspiracies and facing imprisonment on the previously mentioned occasion. For this reason, Amir Taj never got a real chance to settle into his establishment. Finally, he was forced to renounce his magnificent palace and travel in search of tranquility and peace of mind away from the city of Cairo. And this took him far from the threats he felt surrounding him in Egypt. He lived for some years in Jerusalem and then Damascus before dying in 763. along with its significant complex of buildings, annexes and gardens, were built on a huge rectangular plot overlooking a main commercial street named Estufeya. Both the eastern and western sides of the palace are enclosed, giving it a scheduled and private atmosphere, while the whole complex is surrounded by a big stone wall keeping all its inner courtyards and quarters out of the sight of passerby. <laughs>
move on to the main entrance, which is located on El Tiusea Street. A central portal, richly decorated with stalactites, flanked by two secondary arches. Today, only three quarters of the facade and entrance are visible, as the street level has been elevated over the years, and the lower parts of the structure are now partially buried. The ground floor is occupied by craftsmen's shops. All along the facade has a very beautiful painted ceiling. The western and main entrance was also used as an entrance for carriages. It led directly to the central courtyard, which was also near to the stables of the complex. Though the entrance has similar features to that of the Yashbek Palace, it has a more simple style than the monumental architectural aspects of the luxurious decorative style of the other. entrance overlooked a rather dim, narrow alley. This entrance is also characteristic for its simple architectural style. The detailed and rich decorative ornaments appear only in the interior chambers and courtyard walls of the palace. The inner courtyard of the palace has four entrances, two of which are the original ones. They are located on the east and west sides of the courtyard. In the center lies a large basin which was probably linked to a water well. During the most recent conservation project, an unexpected discovery of the water supply system was made. The system included a water wheel, aqueducts and cisterns. This system added considerable knowledge to our understanding of water distribution system used at the time. Until this find, little was actually known about this complex matter.
loggia or makad is accessed from the main courtyard through a magnificent tri-lobbed portico with rich masonry decoration. Although the loggia shows grand features of Mamluk style, it is however interesting to note that it was a later Ottoman addition to the palace. It was constructed in the 17th century. Nevertheless, it followed the same architectural aspects of the palace as a whole and conserves similar proportions and doesn't stand out as an addition to the palace. look here, you will notice that the Maqad overlooks the courtyard through four grand arches linked with wooden beams resting on three marble columns topped with impressive Corinthian capitals. The ceiling is beautifully painted, showing remains of gilded decorations and the lower inscription band circulating the three walls of the spaces. And let's take a closer look at the palace. On the first floor is the main car or hall, which follows the classic traditional design of a central Durka and two opposite side Iwan. The three rounded openings of the car overlooking the courtyard were probably modified in a later period as the original ones are noticeable. The car has two entrances. The main one opens onto a marble staircase, while the other leads to the private quarters of the establishment on the second level. Many of the rooms and chambers of this huge complex are in good condition and show traces of the original plaster and painting. The bathrooms on the ground level show a beautiful ceiling, fierce vaulted and flat ceilings with cone-shaped colorful blocks. This 
was a very common feature used for illumination and as a means to help evacuate evaporated water. One of the original ceilings remaining in the palace is that of the Northwest Iwan in the main car. The paintings and decorative elements show Bahri Memlub characteristics, while the opposite Iwan seems to date back to the 15th century, as it is in relatively better condition. was badly affected and suffered many structural damages when Qatar suffered an earthquake in 1992 and unfortunately because this damage was not corrected at the time, some years later the interior suffered further damage and the entrance and the car overlooking the entrance collapsed. The palace now serves as a local community center, including training in design and production of traditional carpets and partly as an historic city museum with display of artifacts, architectural fragments, remains of ancient architectural ornaments and display of Memluk history period. For those who would like more about the history of Memluk or some information about such a period. This is one of the best places to visit, especially the Nemluk exhibition within the palace. You can see on the left detail of the ceiling in the palace and on the right the Nemluk exhibition. One of the most important palaces to visit in Cairo. And when we talk about palaces, we have to mention that we have many different palaces. Each one belongs to a different period of time, and each one has its own architectural style. It differs from the Pharaonic to the modern to the Mimluk to many different eras. And for those who are interested in history, to learn more about culture and civilization, can visit such palaces in Egypt, not only located in Cairo, but outside Cairo as well. Here, you will learn more about culture and civilization. We will always try to bring you more about these important places here in Egypt. For those who are interested in cultural tourism. Today, our visit was here in the Amir Taj Palace and next time we are going to bring you more about important places to visit in Egypt.
if you are looking to spend your vacation in Egypt, all what you need to do is just to put down your priorities and your needs during the vacation. If you are looking for a recreational tourism, if you are looking for some of the ancient sites, well, definitely I'm sure that you will find here in Egypt all what you are looking for. All what you need to do is just to decide on your own needs. When you visit Egypt, you will find many beautiful sites to visit. When we talk about Cairo, we have several places. These places not only reflect ancient Egypt, but also reflect modern Egypt and many, many different other eras. And each place and each building will tell you more about to the era that it belongs to. That was all for now. We will be back. We'll bring you more about Egypt on our backpack.